I'm Brandon Anschultz. I'm here to talk about my front room exhibition, Pacer, at the Contemporary Art Museum in St. Louis, spring 2012. Most of my work revolves around painting and around uh, the materials used in painting, and I manipulate those in a lot of different ways, straightforward on, on canvas, on panels, uh, but I also move into the sculptural realm. So for the front room exhibition here at the Contemporary, um, I'm continuing a body of work I've been making for the last two or three years that's born directly out of um, manipulation of paint. The materials start to interact in really interesting ways. You know, the, the oil starts to leach out of the paint into the canvas or into panels. And, and that's where I think um, some of the interesting intersections of my work happen. And the, the paintings themselves, like I'm, I'm thinking aesthetically when I'm making this, I'm thinking about color a lot. Uh, for the front room show, I went for a pretty spring-ish palette since the show happens in spring. So, you know, we've got some, some bright red, reddy pinks and some sort of acidic greens that work together in a pretty interesting way. But I always like to throw in um, other colors that don't necessarily make, you know, sense in the work to, to really highlight the difference in, in, the, in the palette and, and to give it something interesting. That's exemplified in uh, the, the show in the front room pretty well through um, a piece called Pink Green, and it's, it's a small canvas, raw canvas, with um, sort of a pinkish and green oil paint on that. And that piece is paired with a large panel of glass that, that shares the same composition and shares the same colors as, as the first painting. And, and I like where, um, I like how that sort of represents the generational shift in my work sometimes, because the, the, the painting itself was sort of the first generation of, of making that work. And that, that work was made um, almost like a print. It was made by applying paint to a canvas and then smashing that canvas into another piece of material. I think it was a panel. And letting those two kind of live together for a while and prying it apart. And that's how that painting resulted. And then the second and third generation of that, I, I, I remake the canvas, or I remade the painting in a bigger way and pressed it to glass this time and, and removed that. So, the piece on glass that's just leaning against the wall is, is sort of three or four generations away from the painting. And I work a lot like that where I'm, I'm, I'm taking one idea and just barely manipulating it or just changing its scale or just changing its color and, and moving it through a couple of different iterations. My, my work comes from a lot of improv, improvisation. You know, I, I take the materials that I use to make paintings um, and then they sort of find their way into sculpture. You know, this can be as direct as the, the, the wood that's left over from making a painting panel gets then sort of transitioned into a sculpture where I'll take that material and start adding other materials to it, you know, like paint tubes or any other just sort of stuff laying around the studio. And for the front room show, I've got one of these sculptures where it was an amassing of different materials from around the studio that then I start to hide kind of in, in layers of paint. So I, I take paint and, and I, I, I you know, literally dip these objects in paint over and over and over, slightly adjusting the color of the paint as I go until at the end you're left with sort of an amorphous shape where what was originally there is really hidden and, um, and it's not necessarily important to me whether that's known or not because the object itself in the end is, is the more interesting thing. The small sculpture that I have on the floor of the front room is, is a gray, sort of lumpy shape, and I, I color match the, the really beautiful concrete of the contemporary to, to get to that color uh, and, and change that color over the process of a couple of months as I was making the sculpture. So it really sort of hides and it's sort of camouflaged on the floor, and, and it's maybe alluding to, to something that's underneath definitely what's underneath the paint, but maybe something underneath the floor even. I, I like the work to be open-ended, and I like there to be as sort of many questions as there are answers within the work. The new things that I, that, that I discovered while I was working on this show was a painting that, uh, in this show, is called Peep Show, that's a painting on a foam material that I found. And um, I, I started working with this foam material, and I like the way it sort of mimicked the form of a canvas in, it, in its shape and in its initial look. Like when you first look at it, it looks like it might be a painting on canvas, but when you get closer, it's just a piece of foam that um, I've used different dyes and inks to go sort of in and out of the, the, the plane of the foam itself. So the, the, the painting itself exists in the material as well as on top of the material, whereas usually, you know, a painting surface is the window into the painting is, is sort of an old school idea of thinking about painting. But I also like the doubleness of that title where Peep Show was about sort of revealing what the painting is while at the same time concealing what it is. One of the things that happens um, 
in the studio for me, since I am sort of always working in a material improvisation sort of way, is that there's a lot of, of, of failure. And actually, th there was a, a pretty big failure for the Front Room show. I had a piece in mind the whole time for this show, and when we got here, it just didn't work. And, and I, I come across things like that constantly in the studio, and, and it, they usually turn out to be good, because the, the piece um, that I'm most happy with in the Front Room show is, is a little piece of sculpture hanging from this gold rod that bisects the, the top of the, the room. But that really wouldn't have happened had my first idea not failed. And, and I, I work like that a lot, where it's, it's just sort of trial and trial and error. And, and I'm really pretty quick to, um, to move past an idea if it doesn't work in the right context. And uh, I, I think that, the, that being nimble like that is, is a really, it's a big asset for me when I'm, when I'm working to inst install a show like this, where it's just a couple of objects pared down, going in with a, an idea or two, and then pairing it back into something that's a little transformative for me. I think I'm, I think I'm most happy um, in an exhibition when I come away from the exhibition with more questions about my work. And I think I did that in, in, the, in the front room. You know, I, I went in with sort of an expectation of what I was gonna do and, and the process of, uh, of making the show and putting the show together and reading the writing that, uh, that Dominic wrote about the work really informed me in a way that, that I hadn't thought about the work in a, in, in a couple of directions. And, and that's one of the things that I like most about doing a project like this is it carries forward in the studio. I, you know, after, after the show was installed, I went back to the studio and I'm, I'm working on the next body of work that's gonna change 25 degrees from, from this body of work because of what I sort of learned in, in the successes and failures of, uh, of what I did here.